But as you're about to see, the outcome can often be much worse. Oceanside, California. In the middle of rush hour, a news helicopter follows police officers pursuing a black car in a high-speed chase. He's, he's still kind of courteous, so at this point, it doesn't look like there's too much desperation. Naturally, he doesn't want to be caught. But this seemingly routine chase is about to take a horrific turn. Oh, boy, here we go. Boom! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Jason Ostell is the traffic reporter flying overhead in a news helicopter. We were originally launched out on a different chase that was coming down the coastal commute, down five, and it was coming from Orange County, and that one ended up in the Camp Pendleton area. And no sooner had that one ended than our assignment desk said, wait, we've got one coming out of Riverside, which is very rare. I mean, two chases right at once. And the suspect does not slow down. You've been, you know, cutting people off, anything like that. No, not that I've seen. He was driving uh, speeds in excess of 80, 90 miles an hour. Occasionally, he'd get over 100. Uh, oftentimes, he'd use the shoulder. He wasn't trying to hurt anybody. It didn't seem like. He was just trying to get down the freeway as fast as he could. He had uh, plenty of people after him, that's for sure. Weird. For a moment, it looks like the police have this runaway driver under control. OK, they're telling him to stop. Good, Nicola. Very good. But the driver of the black car has other plans. Now he doesn't want to stop. Well, they've given him a chance. They have given this guy a chance just to surrender. It's peaceful. You didn't see any weapons drawn there. Just a highway patrolman saying, step out, let's talk about this. No, he's going to take a left turn. No, he's going to go into Oceanside. Watch again. One of the CHP officers got out of his car walked in front of it over to the side of his car and pointed, you know, get out of the car. And the guy just took off. He gave him every option, you know, to just step out of the car and end it. But this guy had to floor it. And I was very surprised. This is a residential area here. The suspect makes a drastic decision. He turns onto the Pacific Coast Highway that runs through the center of Oceanside. I mean, when you get into a chase situation, uh, you're thinking, this thing is going to end, and how is it going to end? But I never, ever expected anything like I saw that day. Jason watches helplessly as the suspect barrels through a red light. Oh, boy, here we go. Boom! Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is terrible. This is uh, in Oceanside. This chase has just ended. Um. Boy, that's tough. I'm, I'm speechless. I'm sorry. Oh, man. The light was just turning red. As it turned red, that's when I realized something bad was about to happen because if you look at the shot, you'll see the cross traffic. It comes in from the south, from the left side of your screen. That was the first thing I saw. I saw the cars pulling into the intersection, knowing that they had no idea what was about to cross their path. The black car blows through the red light and smashes into the unsuspecting drivers. It was like an explosion in the intersection, and from then on, it was, it was just so surreal. It was very emotional, because I thought for sure somebody had been killed. Take another look. First, the black car hits a white Jeep, then slams into the red truck crossing in front. The force of the crash sends the truck careening into a car stopped at the light. But drivers are not the only victims here. An innocent pedestrian crossing the street is nearly hit by the flying wreckage. Moments later, the police are on the scene. OK, now we've got the guns drawn, and rightfully so. Um, what, a, what a horrific crash. Well, when the dust started to settle, it was a case of guns being drawn. All the police officers were drawing down on, who, on this guy that they were chasing. But it was very apparent to anybody who was watching it that this wasn't somebody who was going to be in any condition to put up a fight. Incredibly, the innocent drivers caught in this tangled mass of metal sustain only minor injuries. OK, it looks like the driver of the truck is out. I'm hoping that's the driver. He's OK. I, ha I personally haven't seen anybody come out of the, the Nissan 200 there. Guns are drawn here. We got somebody looking out the back window of the car that was being chased. They're helping somebody out of the Jeep, the white Jeep right here at the top of your screen. OK, and we're walking. But the driver of the black car suffers serious spinal injuries, leaving him confined the, uh, to a wheelchair. Uh, injured in the Not only had he caused that accident at that intersection, 
but uh, he also suffered the consequences of it as well. Jason has witnessed other red light accidents, but none so terrifying as this one. Intersections are dangerous anyway. Most accidents happen at intersections, and the running of red lights, uh, it's just, it's basic. You, if you run a red light, you go against the very rules that govern that intersection. And as you can see, the results in this case were just nearly catastrophic. Most of us have run a red light at least 